Hello Internet, Seth Skorikowski. On my channel, I've done a fair number of module reviews that are used in different systems, or I've done different reviews for various role-playing game systems themselves. And one type of comment that I get pretty often is people saying that they're very interested in learning a new RPG system, but they're kind of intimidated to, or they just don't know how. Now, of course, sometimes you still have that person that jumps on there and they give that comment of like, well, if you want to learn a new RPG system, all you got to do is read the book. And then laughing, they high-five themselves because they have no friends and then right off into the darkness. That type of advice is completely unhelpful. It's about as helpful as somebody saying that they want to learn how to drive a car and telling them that, no, all they got to do is just stick the keys in the ignition and go. Pretty useless advice. Obviously, that's a step, but that is far from the only one. Now, currently, my group and I are going through the process of learning a new tabletop role-playing game. Right now, we're learning the Conan role-playing game by Modiphius, and so my regular viewers have kind of watched this process go on. You know, first we started with a box opening, and then more recently, different various scenario reviews have been dropping. So learning a new game system has really been on my mind a lot lately, and learning a new game, or at least learning a new edition of a game that you already know, that can be a bit daunting, but it doesn't actually have to be difficult. I think most players learn how to play their first tabletop role-playing game the same way that I did. And that's that they learn from somebody else. Either they hook up with a game master that already knows how to run it, or they hook up with a full group that already knows how to run it. Usually seems to be D&D as everybody's kind of first stepping stone into role-playing games. And they join this group, or they hook up with this game master, and that person or people kind of help them through the ropes and get them through the more difficult parts of the whole learning curve process. But then, once you do know that role-playing game, you're standing at the top of the learning curve, right? And you look over and you see another role-playing game that you'd like to try out, but then you see that curve that's between them. And it suddenly becomes a lot more daunting because you know how many rules you end up learning for a role-playing game, and you're kind of intimidated to try to learn all that without somebody showing you the ropes as how to do it. So that's what we're going to discuss today, how to learn a new tabletop role-playing game, or at least the method that I use to learn a new tabletop role-playing game. Uh, it's had quite a bit of trial and error involved in this, quite a bit of error over that time. Now the first and most obvious step, so obvious that I'm not even going to number it, is simply reading the book. Now the question here comes down to which book do you start with? Now, some games have starter sets for them, and if your game that you're wanting to learn has a starter set, then perfect. It should have everything that you need in order to learn how to play this game. However, some players, either they don't have a starter set for whichever game it is, or they just want to go ahead and start with the core books and not waste their time with a starter set that doesn't have the complete rules, the question then becomes, which book do you start with? Now, for most role-playing games, they only have a single core book, and that makes it pretty easy. You just pick up the core book and go. However, other games, such as Call of Cthulhu, have separate player's guides. Same thing goes for the new Conan, and with those, you start with the Game Master book or the core book. Now, meanwhile, other games, most obvious of those being Dungeons & Dragons, they don't do it that way. With D&D, you actually start with the player's guide and then work your way up to the Dungeon Master's guide if you want to learn the rules. So just double check before you make any purchases as to which book it is that you should be starting with. Otherwise, you might get it wrong, and that becomes you know, confusing and frustrating and can get pretty expensive on you. Now, the real step one begins with making a character. Almost every book out there begins with a little introduction about the game, a little bit about the world, what sort of dice you need, maybe it has a little short story or something. But the first actual rules begin with character creation. RPGs have been following the same format for about 40 years now, and the reason for that is pretty simple. The easiest way to learn a new game is first by building a character for it. Now don't stress yourself out about making the perfect character for this role-playing game. You're probably never even going to play this character, at least you don't have to. Just simply make a character, follow all the rules on how to do it, and that's all that you need them for. If you want to use that character later on, that's perfectly your fine, that's your business, but a lot of the times I never even use these PCs. The point that you're doing here is as you're making the player character, you're going to start seeing how all the different rules in this system work, how all the stats and the skills affect each other, and everything else that goes into the rules for a player character. 
But also, as you start delving deeper into the rules and you're getting to combat equipment and all that stuff, you now have a point of reference that you can then apply all these rules to to see how they affect your character, how your character could do these things, rather than reading all these rules without a player character. And now you're kind of looking at them as sort of these nebulous and arbitrary things, and you don't have anything that you can really plug them into. Now, during the time that you're going through this book and you've got your player character sheet by your side, this is also when you're going to start step two, making your cheat sheets. As you're going through the rule book, start making notes of the different rules that you foresee yourself using a lot during games. Now, some of these rules are just going to be found on charts. Some of them are going to be entire sections, such as character conditions. But what I do is I start assembling all these rules now and making all these cheat sheets now. That way, when we actually start playing, I can give these cheat sheets to my player characters and they can have all these rules at the tips of their fingers. Now, for example, here's the one that I did for 5th edition D&D. List off the conditions, movement, rest, various combat rules, and other things which the players are going to use regularly. Then for Cyberpunk, this is what we used, mostly assembled charts. Hollow Earth Expedition, we got it all down to two pages. Call of Cthulhu was only a single page, and that was pretty nice to only have a one-page one. And then when we moved up to Pulp Cthulhu, that went back up to two pages. Now, cheat sheets are invaluable, not only because giving them to your players means that they have these rules at the tips of their fingers and it doesn't slow sessions down because you have to open up the book and search for them. They should hopefully be right there. But the other reason is because the simple act of you making the cheat sheets helps cement all of these rules in your mind. So that's the actual biggest benefit, is because you as the Game Master are going to learn these rules better by essentially copying them down, maybe having to abbreviate them in some sort of shortened form. That's how you're going to learn how these rules work. So you as a Game Master are probably not going to be using the cheat sheets as much as your players are. Now, these cheat sheets are going to be a living document, meaning that you are regularly going to be updating them and changing them and tweaking them, especially at the beginning as you start playing the first few sessions. So these documents are going to be something that you're not only going to be referencing a lot, but you're going to be making a lot of modifications to in the early stages of you learning this new game. So in the beginning, you are going to be updating the cheat sheets a lot, but it is something that you need to start early on when you're learning the game. So that's why we're going to go ahead and put this as step two. Now, step three, that one is a lot more fun. Fun, and that is combat practice. Now, it doesn't matter if your game system is very combat focused or a very combat light system. Combat is where most of your players are going to be using the most rules in the shortest amount of time during each individual game. Most RPGs are just going to live or die by how smoothly their combat scenes go. And nothing sucks the fun faster out of a combat scene than having to stop every time somebody wants to try something and opening up the book and flipping through the book and learning how all those things work in the course of combat. That's boring. And your job as a game master is to keep the games fun and enjoyable for everybody at the table. So before you subject your players to the slower and bumpier parts of your learning curve of trying to learn how combat works, what you need to do is just simply practice the combat rules first. And for that, I have a pretty simple method. For the past 19 years, I have followed the exact same method, and I take one trusted player. It's my buddy Jesse. It's been Jesse now for 19 years. And he and I sit down, we've read the combat rules, and then armed with his character sheet, and my character sheet, and a bunch of dice, we then go through the process of just murdering the hell out of each other for a few hours in order to learn the game. But no matter how much we've studied the game before we actually start these combat sessions, all of them seem to start off the exact same way. Okay, are we ready to start? Yeah, dude, I've read over all the rules and I got this down. Awesome, let's begin with melee. You're here in an alley and your opponent is here. Let's begin. Okay, uh, how do I do initiative? Well, you just, um, I don't remember. Check the book. We start them off pretty small, usually with non-weapon melee fighting, and then work our way up through the various weapon melee fighting, and then ranged weapons, automatic weapons, then we start adding things like armor and shields and different sort of terrain, multiple combats, and all the different variables that you can have within the combat rules. And we use do this over and over again until we feel that we've got a really solid foundation to how the combat rules work in this game. Now, there's no consequences for it. There's no experience, there's no skill improvement, there's no permanent death. It's just simply us murdering each other over and over again, sort of live, die, repeat sort of deal. 
But as we do this, we do start understanding how the rules work, especially those rules, the smaller ones that didn't look like they were going to be that important at first, or they might have seemed kind of weird and you weren't really sure about them. This is where you get to test those out. And a lot of the times we find out that those are also very important rules, and sometimes they're a lot of fun, even if at first we thought, oh, I don't really know how this is going to work out. After that, I just update the cheat sheets if I need to, and then we're on to step four. Character creation one-on-ones. When learning a new game system, I like to sit and personally work with each player as they make their character. I help advise them on any sort of rules and other suggestions and answer any questions that they have. But the act of making their character, me sitting with them, doesn't just help them pull from the knowledge that I've already gathered, but it helps me as a game master learn how the specific rules are going to be working for that player character, you know, depending on what sort of race and class and skills or abilities that they pick up. So we're really just teaching each other. And as I've always said, gaming is a group effort. Now, on a few occasions, I'm not able to do this as perfect one-on-ones. You know, life happens and gets in the way, schedules don't work out, and I will concede occasionally and do it two players with me sitting there making characters, but I never let it be more than two players at a time. But I really don't like to do that. I like to actually be able to give the player my full undivided attention, and I like to be able to sit with them as long as they need in order to make this character. I feel that that's going to be the most beneficial for both of us if we are just sitting there, just the two of us, making a character and going to the rules together. Now on to step five, the practice game. Before I want to play with a full group and have all of us endure the bumps and the learning curve all at the same time, I first run a practice game. It's going to be a two-player adventure, and for this, many games out there offer some free quick start rules with a free introductory scenario in them, and these things are perfect. Not only because the scenarios included are usually pretty simple, but they're also designed to show the game master how the adventure in that game should feel. It also usually helps baby step you through the different various little rules as they're presented in the scenario. Also, the quick start rules, if you print off the quick start rules and give them to your players, they are a very great tool in order to give them a lot of rules in the game in a nice, short, concise fashion. I usually print off everything that doesn't have the adventure and you know, hand that around once we're starting a new game. Now, we don't always just run one single duo session. A lot of times I'll also have some solo games in there. I might do a couple different duo sessions with different player characters and players. That way we can all sort of kind of learn the rules together. But we don't all have to do that as a full group, because when you have a full group, that's when you're more often going to have to stop the game every time somebody tries to do something and check the rules. It's just a small group of us sitting down, learning the game together, and that way it works a lot faster and a whole lot smoother with less people there. Now, I'm also going to throw out that Call of Cthulhu has what they call solitary adventures, like Alone Against the Flames. And what these are, these are adventures where you can actually game master yourself through them. There's no game master involved, it's just you as the player going through this book. It's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure book if you had those when you were a kid, except these use a character sheet and dice. They are a great tool to help you start learning the rules, and I used Alone Against the Flames as a solitary game before I actually ran anybody else when I learned Call of Cthulhu. Now, after the practice game, or after each of the practice games, if you're doing multiple ones, we're on to step six. Review the rules. See what you and your players did during those test games. What did you and your players forget? What did you do wrong? What could you have done better? Do the cheat sheets need updating now that you've had some practical experience with the game? Mistakes are going to be made during your practice game, so don't beat yourself up about that. Just simply learn from them. Let your test players know what sort of mistakes were made during that game, that way that they're aware of them too. And once you've done that and updated the cheat sheets if you need to, you are finally ready for step seven, the first full session. Now here we are. The group is gathered together to finally play this thing. Now at least two of those players should have had a small taste of that when you did the duo game, so they're going to know the rules a bit and they can help you out by answering any questions that the other players have, and that's a wonderful assistant role if they can kind of help lead the other players along as far as what dice you need when and that sort of deal. Now once again, mistakes are going to be made during this first session. Don't worry about that, don't beat yourself up about it. All of your players should know by now that this is going to be a new game for you as a game master, and it should be a new game for them as well as the players. And the great majority of players are actually really understanding, if they're fully understanding, that this is a new game for you and you're still learning the ropes. Personally, I find this whole process of trying to game master players with a system that I'm not 100% versed in, it goes a lot smoother if I present it more as we are learning this game versus I am learning this game. 
As I've said, gaming is a group effort. And if you make this something that we are doing together as a group, the players are going to have a much more sense of ownership and involvement, and they're going to be more inclined to want to learn the game with you. Now, when you hit a snag during this game, and you're going to open up the book and have to check the rules on something, that's no problem. But eventually, that might start dragging the game down. And if it starts dragging the game down, what you need to do is just make a snap decision judgment call as a game master, make a mental note that you're going to check on that at some point after after the game and keep the game going. Remember, this is a full session. This is a game and this is meant to be fun. You as a game master, your biggest job is to make sure your players are having a good time and it's much more important that they have a good time and everybody has fun here than it is about you making sure that you get every single rule perfect the first time that you run it. Running a group of five or six or seven players is incredibly hard compared to running a group of just two players. You're going to have a lot more questions, you're going to have a lot more different rules come up, and these games can be very difficult to do with the new system, but just keep the game going at all times. Have fun, use what you've learned, make your best judgment, and worry about all those little details like that later on. The reason I'm stressing this point is because I have watched countless game masters over the years either psych themselves out of ever running that first game because they believed that they had to understand all the rules absolutely perfectly before they should ever attempt the first game, but you're never going to learn all the rules perfectly by simply reading a book, so they never learned them, they never had the first game. Or I've watched game masters that did run the first game, but they believe that they had to get every single rule absolutely perfect, go coming out the gate the first time that they ran it. So the first game they did ended up going up in flames because nobody had fun because it was nothing more than everybody flipping through the book trying to make sure that they were getting every single detail right. You were supposed to be the game master, the master of the game. But nobody ever became a master the first time that they ever attempted something. You have to flex those mental muscles in order to kind of understand how all the rules that you've read about actually work when you're running a session. It is a learning curve after all. You're not going to start off as an absolutely perfect rules knowing GM. So run that session as well as you can and if it's clear to your players that you're making a true effort to learn these rules and improve yourself, 99% of players are going to be absolutely forgiving if the game master is obviously trying to learn the game. So focus on them having fun. They'll understand that you're learning at the same time as long as you're making it clear that you are trying to improve. Just have fun with it. Okay, once that first session is done, it is time for step eight, reviewing the rules again. Now that you've had a full test with all the different types of characters and all the different stuff that happens and you got a full group together, you have a better understanding of where you might have gone wrong and where areas you might need to polish up on. Some mistakes are going to have been to the player's benefit. Others were not going to be to the player's benefit. Uh, look over all the rules that were used in the game. Make sure that you've used them all correctly. At this point, you should start having a good understanding of what certain rough spots you might need to refresh yourself up on. Make any additions or deletions or changes changes to the cheat sheets if you have to. Now for our group, we all chat on email between the, our, our games and we all discuss things. And we discussed what rules we ended up getting wrong on the previous session. It's never accusatory, we're never saying, you did this wrong. It's more of, hey, FYI, we did this wrong. Mistakes are going to be made and if you make a mistake, own that mistake, let everybody know, hey guys, I screwed up. But even with all the between game discussion that we do, the next full session still begins with step nine the pre-game review of missed rules. This is the formal time where I say what rules that we got wrong in our last go. I'm going to remind the players of any skills or abilities they might have forgotten about because they didn't use them or utilize them in the previous game, and we make the proper announcement that while we did some stuff wrong before, we're now aware of the correct way of doing it and we're going to be following the correct rules from now on. Now, outside of some sort of incredible circumstance, I'm not going to try to modify anything that happened in the previous game. If the players had a rough time of it, or if they got too many experience points, or too much treasure, or they did something that was just impossible for them to do, but we didn't know better because we did the rules wrong, we're just going to say that, hey, the past is the past. Going forward, we're going to do it correctly. That trick's not going to work again. And we're just going to keep doing the game correctly and not worry about the spots where we did it wrong before. Players and game masters are all going to apologize to each other, but there's no hard feelings. We're simply learning from our mistakes and we're moving forward. Now, in fact, with our current game where we're learning Conan right now, we're going through this process at the moment. Now, to my right, there is a whiteboard that's got all sorts of various rules that we got wrong in the previous session that we ran. As you can see, there really weren't that many of them that we had, but when the next session starts, what we'll do is we'll just address each of these one by one, erase them as they go, and once the whiteboard is clean, get on with the adventure. 
At this point, it's just pretty much rinse and repeat. You play your games, have fun, review the rules afterwards, formally declare if any rules were done wrong and make an issue trying to correct them, update the cheat sheets, but pretty quickly that all starts tapering down. Usually after the third session, we don't really need to worry about that stuff anymore. Sometimes a little more, but usually after about three sessions, we're pretty comfortable and we've got the rules down. Now, as we get deeper and deeper into the game and hit the higher levels and all of a sudden suddenly new rules and options become available to us, we might have to review that system like that, but we're always aware of what rules we're doing and occasionally I do go back and check and make sure that, yep, we're still definitely on track. But that's pretty much it. It's not that hard to do. I'm probably making it sound a lot less fun than it is, but it's actually pretty fun. But let me also offer a couple other pieces of advice I have that don't really fit into that, you know, step one, step two process. The first of which being read reviews for this new system that you're learning or planning to learn. See what other people are saying about this game. As I said in my how to run a module video, most reviews are not going to be that helpful. But the most helpful reviews you find are probably going to fall into the category of first-hand experience reviews. If somebody gives a glowing or a scathing review of some game system that they clearly have never played, that's a pretty useless review. So what you should do is try to focus your attention to try to find all of the different reviews that are the first-hand experience from somebody that says, hey, we tried this in the field, this is where it went great, this is where it didn't go great, these are the things that you need to look out for. To me, those reviews are absolute gold, and those are the ones that I pay the most attention to. But also keep in mind that no review out there, not even my own reviews, should be considered absolute verdicts. Game experience is going to be different for every single group out there due to a wide array of factors. So good or bad, you should pay attention to the reviews, but don't hold them as if that's the absolute verdict on them. Just be aware of anything that you might need to look out for. Next, look into the gaming communities. Just about every game out there has at least one online community, and the more popular games have got several dozen online communities. Talk to the different players there, find out different tips and tricks and ideas, find out what to look out for, find out about how they were able to work with certain parts of the rules. Now one thing that amazes me with these online communities is that the creators are often there, they're often involved. So if you go onto some group and it's on Reddit or Facebook or some forum somewhere and you're asking a question on, you know, how to clarify some rule, oftentimes you'll have the writer of the game answer your question and you know, it's kind of like, wow, that's definitely the way it is, the author of the game answered it. And to me as a gamer, that's fantastic. You know, it's like, it's like Zeus on top of his mount looking down and going, no, you get two proficiencies at this level. It's, it's pretty cool. Finally, let's talk about house rules. This is where you're going to trim the fat, soup it up, and make the game your own. I'm a huge fan of house rules. I've shared some of them on my other videos. And that being said, I don't implement house rules until after the first game session. And that's when I start looking into the option of possibly changing things. You know that person that goes to a nice restaurant, and they've got some award-winning chef, it makes them some fantastic meal, and the moment that plate hits their table, they immediately reach over and they grab the salt shaker and they start dumping salt all over this meal. And you're looking at me you're like, you haven't even tried that yet. And they're like, well, I know I need salt. It's like, Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You don't know. And also, you don't know how much salt it needs. So I don't just start using house rules before I've actually tried the rules as they're presented. Kind of the same thing, you know, tr taste the rules, see how they are, swish it around in your mouth, and then you get to know how your house rules should apply, how that anything might upset the actual balance of the game. And once I know how the rules work, that's when I'm comfortable enough to start feeling like I can change them. More than once, I have seen a rule when I was going through my initial readings of a new RPG that I thought was kind of counterintuitive or kind of weird and I didn't really like it. But then I actually tried using that rule and I found it to be one ended up being one of my favorites or something that made a whole lot of sense. And if I had just kind of discarded that rule altogether, then I might have accidentally hurt the game in the long run. So I go ahead and I try out all the rules, even if they seem weird, and that's when I start deciding if I want to start hot riding it up and how I'm going to hot rod it up after I've tried it out. And there you go. That's how I learn a new game system. Now, any time in the past that I've deviated from those rules or skipped a step or something like that, I've ended up regretting it. So this is something that I've learned through a lot of trial and error. I really wish learning a new game system was easy as, you know, picking up a game book and holding it to your head and suddenly absorbing all the knowledge at once or simply watching enough streams of people playing it online and learning, oh, well, that's obviously how I could do it. That way, the first time that I tried it would just work. But that's not how it works. Learning a new game is work. But it doesn't have to be hard, and it doesn't have to be a bad experience. I personally find it very fun and very fulfilling in order to learn a new game. Hopefully my method will work for some of the people out there that have up until now felt a little bit intimidated about taking that plunge into learning a new game. 
Now, of course, everyone is different, so it might not be the best method for you, who knows. But I strongly do encourage that players and game masters do occasionally step outside their comfort zone and learn a new game. Our gaming experience is only improved by expanding our exposure to all the different game systems that are out there, and hopefully yours will too. Anyway, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, share. Also, I stuck some links down in the video description below for the different cheat sheets that I had made for different games. So if you'd like to try any of those out, just go to the links below and have them use them to your heart's content. Also, I stuck some links below for the different quick start rules that I showed. So if you're interested in trying out any of those games, there you go. Some free quick start rules as long as a free adventure. Also, I've stuck uh, some links below for my own books and my audiobooks. So if you want to support my channel, you can pick those up. Or if you're just in the mood for some kick-ass urban fantasy about monster hunters, you can probably check them out and enjoy them. But until next time, gamers, you have a great day.